state management um, in React has many forms and many variations. Um, it's kind of, there's no one way to do it. Uh, there's many, uh, all, you know, there's many different ways of implementing the same thing. And uh, I think that the fact that you can do things in so many different ways causes some analysis paralysis for uh, folks who are trying to uh, learn React. Uh, there's so many, just so many tutorials and every tutorial is different, right? And it's kind of, you, you feel like you're making the wrong choice no matter what choice you make just because there's so many ways to do it. Um, and I, I, I tutor a lot of folks uh, who are getting started and this is the biggest hurdle by far is um, I don't know if I'm making the right choices. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing things right because every time that I look this up, there's a different way to do it. Um, so I thought that for this first uh, talk, we could kind of get started with, uh, instead of just jumping into like, a, you know, hooks tutorial um, or whatever the latest greatest thing is, we can kind of walk through how state management has evolved and how state management has changed uh, through time in React, and um, and look at the, what the motivation was. You know, why did we um, why did we leave one convention for another convention? And that will maybe lead us to understand why we do things the way we do them now in some of the more modern features of of React. Um, besides, you know. The React team just tells us how to do things most of the time, but um, yeah, just kind of understand the motivations of, you know, how do we get here, right? There's a million ways to do it, and let's just start, let's just start from the beginning. Um, I'm just gonna jump right into some demonstrations and some, some code. Maybe we can just kind of all, I'm gonna, this, this is more gonna be, um, I'm gonna ask some questions, and they're not, like, I actually, hope people will give their opinions and give, uh, it's not like, it's, these are not rhetorical questions uh, that I'm gonna be asking. So I'm just gonna jump into, um, think of this as like a tour through the history of uh, React State. So um, I wanna start at uh, what I'm calling the OG or the original way, how we, most of us probably learned React, right? Um, um, just want to make sure that we are accommodating everybody here. So um, we have a React component, a class-based React component here that has some state, which is a theme that currently is uh, being initialized as light. Uh, and we have um, a uh, function that is going to handle uh, when we uh, how we change state. So this function is going to simply use the set state function and grab the old state and flip it to whatever the opposite of what it currently is. So if our theme is light, it's going to turn it dark. And if it's not light, meaning it's dark, it's gonna turn it back to light. Um, so originally, this is how we all learn React, or most of us. Um, and the way that it worked is from the app or the top level component, we would initialize our state and some of our actions, and then we would pass them into our components that, that needed them. In this case, I have a demo component, which is gonna, uh, gonna be the component that we're gonna use throughout the presentation to, to show these, these different implementations. Our demo component is receiving as props the theme and the toggle theme action. And what's happening is on click, I'm firing that toggle theme and the theme, uh, whatever the current theme is, is being displayed inside of this button, and that theme is also being set as a class name of the, uh, the, the demo div, which is this background here. Uh, so we can see that we click here, uh, the state is changing from light to dark, and that's changing our, um, our component. So um, for, for those of you that, that have maybe seen some uh, React components, um, this might be strange seeing the state outside of a constructor function. This was a, uh, this is like a new uh, class syntax um, called class field declaration. 
So you can actually declare your state without using a constructor. Um, you just can't, you don't have access to the props inside of this, uh, inside of the state. Um, so what were some of the issues when you started to try to build larger applications using this very simple, very naive uh, implementation of a uh, React? I mean, for some, of the, for some of you who have actually worked in React, what are some of the issues that start to pop up once you have 10, 20, 30 components, maybe 50? Does anybody? Yeah, that's the, that's the big one, right? So the big problem with this implementation is prop drilling. Uh, prop drilling is uh, what we're doing right here, which is in order to let this demo component know its state and the action that it should take, we have to pass in that information through props, right? Um, and imagine if we had um, a component inside of another component inside of another component, and you needed an action that was specific to that, say it's, a, it's the, the change theme button, right? Which is gonna be pretty deeply nested somewhere. And you have that one function that needs to run for that specific component, uh, and that function needs to know the state, so it's better if it lives all the way up. There are so many components that are gonna need to have that, that prop pass through it, um, that it's, it's, you would get these massive prop drilling, so you'd have these components that are just receiving a massive amount of props, and they're not using it at all. It's just data that's going through, through them, essentially, uh, unnecessarily. Um, so, uh, to, 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 to solve this, this problem of uh, prop drilling, this is what motivated, or it, kind of gave a rise to a lot of state management libraries. Um, I'm sure if you, if you all have been working with React for a little while, you've, I'm sure you've used some of these. The biggest example was Redux, right? So I know that's a word that can cause some PTSD for some of you, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna show how, um, I have another branch here with Redux in it. I might have to install Redux. Let's see. Oh, my server's down. <laughs> start. All right. There we go. Um, so while this is loading, uh, I think I might have to NPM. Uh, okay, so, <clears throat> so Redux, immediately you can see that there's a lot more complexity, a lot more going on here, right? So uh, the reason why I wanna go over Redux is because some of those patterns that were introduced in Redux um, kind of shaped the way that React, like the way that we think about React even now. Um, so I'm not gonna go over everything, but some of the things that, um, who here is familiar with Redux, by the way? Some, okay. So Redux was, or I guess is a, it's a way to avoid passing props through, or it's those, one of the problems that it solves is you no longer have to prop drill uh, to get a specific piece of data into a component that might be really far down uh, in your component tree. Um, this is a very simple implementation of Redux, and you can see how there's it, there's a lot of stuff that you need to uh, to know, or there's there's a lot of extra things compared to the the basic example. Um, but I'll go over the simplest or the 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 main things here. So the main thing in Redux is the store. Uh, which is this object that gets created by uh, the create store function that comes with Redux. Um, and what that store is essentially is this one place where all your state is kept. And from that store, all your components talk to that store directly instead of having to 
uh, talk to um, essentially having to pass through all the other components. Uh, any component that needs any piece of state will just reach out to the store. And how that is implemented here is we have what's called a provider, uh, which is a, a wrapper around the component that you uh, want to use that state in. And the provider takes in a store. And then the demo component or the component that you want to uh, that you want to pass that state or that function or whatever it is that you want uh, to pass from the store, uh, that component is wrapped in what's called a high order function, which is or a high order uh, component, uh, which in the case of Redux uh, is this, this uh, there's like a function called connect, which what it does essentially injects the, uh, the state into that component so that you don't have to prop drill it. And it also injects the dispatch, which is the way that changes to state are handled uh, in Redux. Um, so we can see how in this component, uh, we can still click here and change the state. And how that's working is our, there's, there's a couple of things here. So the first thing is we have a reducer, which is a function that um, you uh, receives an action and then returns what the new state is going to be. Um, and that is uh, here, I'm just calling it theme reducer because it is only handling changes to the theme in our application. Um, and um, the reducer is where you inject your initial state or your what, whatever the starting state is going to be. In our case, this is our, our initial state. We're starting out with the light theme. And we're injecting it here so that if there is no state to begin with, we default to our initial state. And then whatever action is getting called from our reducer, if that action is the type of toggle theme, then we're going to return our original state and overwrite the theme with the opposite of whatever it is. So this is the same uh, ternary operator that we saw earlier. So it's a lot going on. Um, we, there's some actions here, which is another pattern that came from Redux, which is instead of calling the dispatch directly, you call an action, which then returns the action that's actually gonna get past the dispatch. So there's a lot, there's a lot happening. Um, but um, I guess I just wanna open it up. Like, who here has worked with Redux and what are some of your gripes with it? Uh, for those of you who actually used it, if any, I'm not sure there's going to be some gripes. Anybody? Right. Right. Yeah, and you can see it here. I mean, this is a literally a light switch, and there's 51 lines of code to make this work, right? And you know, four dependencies from two different NPM packages. So definitely boilerplate. Um, maybe uh, another one is like what's called the wrapper hell, right? So when you have, when the only way that you can inject state or uh, essentially state into your uh, component is by wrapping it in a high order component, then you're going to get, if you look in your console in your, in your dev tools, uh, your app is gonna be just these wrappers inside of wrappers inside of wrappers, and it just gets very difficult to debug and essentially figure out where your component is and where, where, where things are, you know, where this is being set. And it's ironic because Redux was developed to help debug really large applications. And I think the high order component or like the, the wrapper hell was kind of a side effect that uh, essentially ended up making it worse in some ways uh, and just making, creating this really hard to debug uh, component trees. Um, and you know, it was invented to uh, 
debug it in like very large code bases where it's already very complicated. Um, and the problem with it is when you use it prematurely in like a small application is to make one simple change, you have to touch a lot of different files, right? In this case, we have a reducer, we have uh, a set of actions, um, we also have our, uh, our connect, our hierarchical component. Um, these would all live in different files. Um, and if you are kind of sticking to the Redux patterns, it would, you would have to touch a lot of places to just make one little change in your application. So that's another gripe. Does anybody have any others about Redux or? Um, so the React team, I think, saw a lot of pain and suffering out in the world because of this. Um, and they released, uh, or they, they decided to do something about that, and their solution was what we now know as context, right? Um, so um, that's kind of, when, it, when context was first introduced, it was kind of immediately like, oh, this is, this is the Redux killer, or this is gonna end Redux. Um, I'm gonna show here a little example of context. <clears throat> so it's, Right, so it was they served as context as a public API. So context was out for a while. Um, it was out experimentally, um, but the, the, the way that it's used now, there's no need for Redux anymore, right? Because of just how context, that, the patterns that emerged uh, from context. So this is kind of the first iteration of, of context, which is, um, I guess I'll just, we're still, this is still pre-hooks, right? So we're still kind of walking through up, we're, we're trying to get the motivation of, of where we're at now. So um, who here have, has used uh, context? It's probably a little more common nowadays, yeah. Okay. So after, um, I guess I'll just start by, walking through here. So I still kept some of the Redux patterns, uh, specifically the dispatch, which is the function that handles any updates to our state. Um, Redux, uh, or sorry, um, context uh, still uses a, a provider, which is a, a wrapper that anything that you put inside of it is going to be, is going to have access to these values that you pass into it. Um, so the first thing is we're now using pure React. So we don't, we don't, we're not depending on any uh, third, third, third party packages. We're, we're now fully inside of only React world, which is nice, right? Um, so there's this theme context object, which is our, uh, our context object and we can instantiate it by doing react.createContext and in this case I just want to create a theme context. So this is where I'm going to keep my information regarding the theme of my application. Um, in our, our class component here, um, I still have my initial state as light. Um, by the way, this should be, yeah. I still have my initial state as, as light, and I am using that theme context to wrap my demo component and hopefully make those things available to it. So you notice how there's, there's been no props anymore in Redux the same thing, right? We, we, we don't need to pass things into that component for it to access it. Um, I do have a, uh, the theme is being passed as one of the values, and I do have a dispatch that's being passed in here. Uh, the dispatch behaves just like in Redux. It takes in some action, and it, depending on what the action is, it'll return the new state. Um, and we can see here in the consumer, so in the demo component that's inside of the provider, we can call this uh, consumer, uh, so it's still the theme context, 
This time it's the consumer. And what the consumer does is it uses the render props pattern to inject, again, the values that you want to pass to that component directly, right? Um, in this case, I'm passing the theme and the dispatch. Um, and it's essentially the same thing, right? We have our theme that is being called in here, and we have the theme that's being set as the background. Um, so what are some of, so there's a lot of good things about this compared to Redux, right? That we don't, um, we, we, we kind of, well, we switched the high order component for the prop, for the render props pattern, right? So that's a big change, one of the big changes. Uh, we're wrapping our components in a consumer and then we are, the, the child of the consumer has to be a function. Um, and this, this pattern is called the render props pattern. Um, so what are some gripes that people have with this pattern or with this version or with this iteration of React State? Does anybody have anything about that? No? I mean, this is pretty good, right? I mean, this is, this was last year? Or, yeah, this time last year, this is what we were using. I mean, you guys are acting like this is horrible. This is like, you know, it's, it's th so th this is what we were using last year, essentially, right? So it's, it's pretty mature at this point. Um, things, things work as expected. And, um, you know, right when everybody's getting very comfortable with this and right when we're all kind of finally feeling like, like we got our feet, like we're, we're finally comfortable and this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good at this, uh, React uh, announces hooks, right? So hooks is kind of the next iteration of, uh, well, React in general, but also kind of this pattern of being able to globally access uh, state. So before I go into hooks, um, so hooks came out in October of 2018. So almost a year, not even a year ago, wow. Um, and um, like people didn't really know why they were coming or like they didn't seem necessary or like they almost didn't seem, it kind of came out of the blue. Uh, there were a lot of like other things that React developers were looking forward to um, that hooks kind of came out of the kind of out of the blue and it didn't really click right away. Like at least for me, I remember I was watching the React, the JS conf where when it came out, and I, I like I just did not get it at all. I was I the demo, even though like looking back now it was pretty simple, I was just like, what is happening? Like this is just really weird. Um, and um, I have here a quote about like from the React team. Uh, from the day that hooks came out, and how they explain hooks is hooks uh, hooks solve a wide variety of seemingly unconnected problems in React uh, that we've encountered over many years of writing and maintaining tens of thousands of uh, components. Um, which you know, it's not like the flashiest, or it's not like you know, it's not a very clear, not like not like a feature. It's kind of like almost like a, just a level up in general, like in the, um, so I'm gonna just switch over here to hooks to, <coughs> um, so right away we see um, hooks is a much smaller, we, we have 30 lines of code, I think when we were at Redux we were almost, we were at 50, right? So the first, thing is like, what's the motivation for hooks, right? So we didn't really see them coming, so what's the motivation? Does anybody, anybody has read a little bit about hooks or um, used them a little bit? Yeah. Right, we gotta do a lot of work, right? <laughs> yeah, so the, the hooks allows um, functional components to uh, persist some state. 
So as we learn React, uh, we learned that if you want to have state, you have to use a class component, right? Because you need to have that either this, that state, if you're doing it inside of a constructor, or just uh, the state as I showed before outside of the constructor if you're not using, if you're not using props. Um, so that's the first thing is we can now use state in a functional component, but it's like, you know, we could have just kept using class components, right? I mean, what, what's, why? It's nice, but it seems like it does the same thing, right? Um, right. That's a big, that's one of the big motivations, or that's, that was one of the big arguments uh, from the React team is, um, it's the fact that code that is sometimes that that is related uh, gets split apart uh, when you're using lifecycle uh, lifecycle components. Um, not even lifecycle components, but just maybe like setting or updating state. Right. Um, if we go back to, I'm going to just go. I'm going to switch back to our initial application. We see how. The state and the updating of state is being kept separate. If you, you can imagine a larger component. Uh, it would have a lot of more uh, key values in the state and a lot more functions to update that state in a specific way. Those things would be, even though these two things are related, and in this example, it's very simple, they are together, but it still takes a little bit, you know. Um, they're not, they're separate really, and they, um, if we go over to hooks, um, quick overview of hooks. Um, hooks provide, so the first hook that we get familiar with is the use state hook, um, and how it works is um, we pass it what we want, the, the initial value of whatever state property we want to keep. Um, and what it returns is an array with that, that state value and a function to update that state value. So in this case, theme is being initialized as light. And set theme is a function that whatever I pass it, it's going to update theme, right? Um, so to show that over here, um, we're still using uh, the provider to pass in these two things. So this is essentially like what we were doing back in, um, in the original way where we're injecting two props, one with the value, one with the function to update that value, right? Here we're doing it now through the provider. And our use context hook allows us to retrieve that, those two values from the provider without having to use the render props pattern, without having to have a consumer with a functional child um, in order for us to get to, to, to those values. Um, those functional, those uh, render prop patterns also um, created a lot of wrap, or like it also contributed to a, a wrapper hell in your application because you have a lot of consumers uh, all over the place. Uh, which I'm sure some of you have seen. Um, we have like a bunch of providers and then a bunch of consumers, and it's kind of hard to figure out where things are. <clears throat> so the set theme function, all, all I'm doing here is when we click on the button, we're just going to set the theme to, and we have our ternary operator here, if it's light, dark, if it's dark, light. So super simple, super clean, right? Um, we're using the context to pull out this, these two things. Uh, and let's verify this works, yes, okay. So I guess I wanted, um, what are some of the other things that hooks do well or that hooks help us out as developers with? Of them, um, where we set state, we 
us with books. Yep. So like a good example that we find with a lot is like creator update scenarios where we put together an idea, we can update it, put together an idea, we can create it. Um, and if we have a couple of the components that are creating the same thing, like we're creating a note that we have like a generic note that's used across the application, we'll have a create, we'll have a use, use create update mode component, or uh, use create update mode function, and then we'll just pass it a note, and then that functionality is going to be encapsulated with that test component. So now we can kind of deal with that test again. So that's one of the, the big ones that we focus on. Yeah. Yeah, so what Chris was talking about is um, not only does React give you a bunch of hooks um, out of the box, but it also allows you to create your own. Um, and that's really, really powerful. Um, as he's saying, you know, you can create a hook, and there's actually a library of hooks out there that you can just tap into that will do all sorts of things that you had to kind of boilerplate do yourself. Like even just like, there's like, very simple hooks like use Boolean. Like if you just don't want to write the two lines that it takes to uh, to figure out, you know, to switch a Boolean, you can you know use these hooks that are um, readily available to you. Um, and especially when you're doing kind of um, the the big motivation is it's hard to it's really hard to reuse stateful logic. Uh, outside of hooks. Uh, like a good example is like when, 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 when you connect to a Redux store or like some sort of store, like that's hard to reuse or that's hard to do in the same way like across multiple places, um, which is kind of what drove to the original higher order component pattern. Uh, so, um, and uh, the third thing that I've kind of heard a lot is that classes are, uh, which is, if you already know classes, you might not think this, but classes are kind of a uh, a barrier to learning React. And one of the reasons is handling the this, right, in classes. Um, binding your functions, uh, using this inside of different places, uh, that I've found it to be a source of confusion that is unnecessary and a lot of people who are starting out, the word this is just like, it totally takes them out of the experience of like, okay, I'm feeling confident about this. It's kind of like this question mark that is in your component and you're like, oh, I don't know what that does, but if I use it in this way, I feel comfortable about it. But in general, it's hard to understand unless you really decide like, I'm gonna understand this and I'm gonna really read up on this. Um, so just a quick uh, to show, uh, hooks also support the reducer pattern, uh, which was brought over from, from, from Redux pretty much. Um, there's a use reducer hook that uh, receives your specific reducer and your initial state, and it returns uh, your state. Uh, it essentially, yeah, returns your state and your dispatch, which is gonna be that function that uh, fires off any changes to your state. Um, so this is all built in. Uh, some applications will still use reducers, uh, just because it's a, it's a. I think it gets a lot of flack, but it, it's a, it, it's a good pattern if you if you use it uh, in 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 the right way. Um, so we have our theme reducer here, our initial state, um, and um, we're passing that as an array here. And inside of our demo component, we're just subscribing and we can uh, deconstruct our state object to grab just the theme. And now this component is, um, I'm gonna have mentioned this before, but this component is subscribed to any changes in these, right? So if the theme changes from any other action in your application, uh, this component is going to receive that change immediately. So any change just gets injected into all the components that are subscribed with this use context. <clears throat> So, let's see, do we have any other hooks? Yeah, so going back to what, what Chris said, uh, the, the custom hooks is really, I, th I think now, uh, a year later, has really proven to be the biggest benefit of hooks. Uh, and as I was working on this, um, on this talk, I 
actually built a hook myself. Um, let's see if this works. Okay, so I built a, it's kind of a combination of a hook and uh, it's essentially a small um, module to help you manage your state uh, when using hooks. Um, so you can see that, uh, so it's called MGMT for like management. Uh, it's also a band. Um, and um, what, what the MGMT, so you can extract uh, a couple of things, but to get started, you can ex extract the MGNT provider and the use MGNT hook. Um, and what MGMT provider takes is an initial state and a, a reducer. And um, from the demo, you can um, extract the, your state or your dispatch from the use MGMT. Um, you see how we're not, we don't have context or we're not initializing any context here. So you don't, um, if you use, this custom hooks essentially takes away the worry of where do I put my context? Should I put it in like the top level or like where do I keep this? Um, it essentially handles that for you um, and it's designed to be used kind of the top layer of application. And um, in this example, I'm just using a theme reducer and um, same pattern as in Redux, right? So we return the updated state here. Um, so let's see if that, yeah, so that's working. Um, so it's, it's simple and it essentially just gives you, it's a quick way to get started with this whole, uh, with, the, with context. Um, MGMT also, like supports multiple reducers. I mean, it's just, it doesn't really, but you can like, it, it, shows, um, it shows you here how you can kind of hook up multiple reducers. So if you wanna keep track of, if you wanna have a reducer for your theme and a reducer for like the text. So in, in this case, um, uh, I have a reducer for, oh wait, hold on. I think that this got stuck. Um, I have a reducer for my theme, so if I make a change to my theme, I want my theme reducer to handle that. Um, if I want, if I make a change to my text that's in, in the button, I want my text reducer to handle that. Uh, so I can inject the root reducer uh, into the reducer here and the provider will still, uh, this will still work. So you can see here how we have the text is static and the theme is now what's changing, the text isn't being updated, that's being handled by, by, by another reducer. Um, and the last thing here is, well, there's a, um, it also supports kind of middleware, meaning um, if you want to, say for example, <laughs> if you wanna make like an API call, I don't know why this is getting stuck. Um, let's say like in a real world scenario where you wanna actually call a server for some data, um, you can do that um, using uh, one more prop called actions, which also comes from the Redux patterns, which is essentially um, a set of functions where you, will, where you would do some uh, async operations, such as like calling an API or um, doing something that essentially you wouldn't wanna do inside of your reducer. Uh, one of the key things about reducers is you don't wanna, uh, it needs to be synchronous or the inside of, of your reducer function, you don't wanna have any sort of uh, like calling an API or like waiting for anything. This all needs to essentially, whatever comes in the action should immediately be processed into the new state. So if you wanna, put like one more layer where you do some business logic, you would put that in actions, and then you would pass that action, and MGMT will essentially merge your reducer and your actions to handle that. Um, we can see how it loads for a second, and what it's doing is, uh, it's using the use effect hook, which um, 
use effect is how you would run with side effects. So for example, um, something that depends on something else. In this case, I have a loading property in my initial state. So you can see up here, when I start my application, I have my theme and I also have loading equals true. So what my use effect does is on initializing, it's going to check if I'm loading the application and if it does, it's going to call one of my uh, management actions to update the state. And this management action is, uh, this is the nice thing about having a middleware is you don't have to call the dispatch. All you have to worry about is these nice uh, action functions that you just call instead of having to type in the dispatch and fire it from there. You essentially are just calling some nice functions that will then themselves will return the action that gets passed to the dispatch. Um, so we see how it loads there for a second. Uh, while it's loading, calls the update state. Uh, the update state will, will clear the loading flag when it comes from the API every time. And um, it'll set the theme here. And if I click on the button, it's gonna toggle the theme handler, which is gonna just simply call another action, toggle theme, and I'm gonna pass it the current theme. And what that action does is calls my API. Also, the API here is just, I just wrote an API, I just didn't, don't wanna show it here, but it's essentially just making a call to somewhere uh, where we don't need to worry about. And it's setting the theme, uh, again, using our ternary operator, uh, whatever the current one is, just flip it. And if the theme changed, so this API only returns true if something changed and false. If it didn't, if it did change, then we can go ahead and update our local state by toggling our theme. Uh, so we can see how I click, takes a second, right? And then if I refresh here, it stays at dark, right? Because that's being handled, that's being stored somewhere. Um, yeah, so like this is kind of a small package. Yeah, go ahead. So to clarify there, your use effect on loading, your update state sets loading to false, and then you Yeah. 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 So use effect is, um, for those of you who worked or who have worked with class components, um, use effect handles, it essentially handles most of your lifecycle methods for you. Um, and the way that it does it, sorry, this is use effect, is you can, you can have multiple use effect functions inside of your component. And how it works is you pass it an anonymous function, and the second argument is an array with what's called a dependency array, uh, which are values that if those values change, you need to run this use effect one more time. Uh, so essentially, in this case, I want, if, if loading changes, um, I wanna run this use effect one more time. In this case, loading, um, It'll run uh, on init, and in this case, like loading, since, since, since loading goes from false to true and stays true, it only runs one time. Um, and the other thing about use effect is you need to pass, a anything that you're using inside of it needs to come in here as a dependency. So for example, my actions, um, if I took these out of here, I would get a, linter error saying that there's a missing dependency here. Uh, React knows that uh, management actions are in here and um, thus it, it knows that there's something off because if this changes, this is not gonna get updated. Um, so that's, that's kind of another hook uh, that is readily available to us out of the box. Um, so, yeah, so this is the management custom hook. Um, if you want, we can take a look at it. So it's actually, um, let me see. I might have to install this. So this hook is 
Yeah, it's working. So it's up on NPM, if you guys want to check it out. Um, just an intro to easy state management um, with React. Um, there's some nice documentation around it just to get started with this stuff. Um, but just to go over it real quick, um, inside of the hook, I'm actually calling, the, I'm creating the context where I'm going to keep this information. Um, and I'm doing some processing to merge the um, to merge the reducer and the actions to kind of make them run one after the other uh, with the return of one to the other. And then uh, this is what the provider does, and we pass in the actions. And then the use management hook essentially just returns the use context that you would get returned if you just call it directly. Um, I also have some support for class components. If you're still using class components, there's a consumer in there. If you are so inclined, uh, you can still consume it as you would a uh, as you would do so using like a regular uh, context consumer. Um, so yeah, so this is just an example of like how you would go about building a like kind of the motivation of. Um, why hooks is powerful, um, and kind of what drove us here, and this is kind of where we're at now. So um, I guess I want to go around, and uh, for those of you that, has, that have used hooks, um, what are some of the things that, um, that you like or that you don't like, or just any, any opinions are welcome. We use, uh, we use hooks pretty heavily here um, at Headway. Um, I think at this point, most of our projects are on 16.8, 16.9. Um, and I think in general, we've been pretty happy with them. They've really made at least my life easier. Um, but, you know, they're not for everyone. Uh, some people have feel a certain way about them. But um, in general, I think that they are solving a problem, they're making at least a developer experience easier. Um, it does require you to kind of think about React in a slightly different way than you would, or that, and I think that that transition is, was kind of expensive in developers' heads. Um, but once you're kind of uh, on the other side, um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it gets better. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to check out that React management, uh, there's a GitHub repo for it if you want to take a look at that. Uh, yeah, I can, if you guys want to take a look at it later, I can show you that. Uh, but yeah, um, that's all I got for today. Um, if you liked it, didn't like it, I would love to hear some feedback on like the, um, what the format was of the talk, um, just in general, people's thoughts, um, if you want to get involved, if you want to come up here and speak yourself, uh, if you have any ideas, you can always uh, email me um, or you can email headway at ahoy at headway. Is that, that'll work? Okay. Any, yeah, you, anything at headway <laughs> will find, yeah, just your name. <laughs> yeah, your name at headway will find its way to us, so. <laughs> And we'll know your name, so. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm Nico Glenn, like on GitHub and pretty much everything. So, yeah, um, cool, thank you. Yeah.